Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you can use. In this series of videos, I'm going to look at stocks to invest in to recession-proof your portfolio. In this particular video, I'm going to do a stock analysis on global payments. We're going to look at if global payments is worth investing in right now, or if you should hold off on it. Let's find out together. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, uh, financials, analyst projections, and I'm going to give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your long-term and short-term growth investors out there as always folks don't forget to smash that like button down below definitely helps and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source so let's get right into it so this video is brought to you by weeble it's an online brokerage and trading platform where you can buy stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. If you sign up today and deposit any amount, you can get 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below. Okay, so Global Payments is a payments technology company that delivers software and services. The company's segments include merchant solutions, issuer solutions, and business and consumer solutions. Now, the Merchant Solutions uh, segment provides payments, technology, and software solutions uh, to customers globally. Now, the segment offers include uh, authorization, settlement, and funding services, customer support, chargeback resolution, terminal rental, sales and deployment, payment security services, consolidated billing, and reporting. The issuer solutions segment provides solutions that enable financial institutions and other financial service providers to manage their card portfolios. Now the business and consumer solution segment provides general purpose reloadable uh, prepaid debit cards and payroll cards, demand deposit accounts and other financial service solutions to the underbanked and other consumers and businesses in the United States and other parts of Europe uh, through its net spend and other brands. But let's go ahead and look at some of the news that are it's hitting the wire recently. Now, a few weeks ago, Global Payments announced that they will acquire Evo uh, payments in an all-cash transaction valued at $4 billion. Now, what does this mean for Global Payments? It accelerates technology-enabled software-driven strategy through further penetration into integrated and business-to-business -business, uh, payments. It enhances exposure to faster growth markets through an entry into new geographies and adding further scale to existing businesses. Now, it generates combined customer base of more than 4.5 million merchant locations and well over 1,500 financial institutions globally. Now, it provides significant financial and operating scale with combined adjusted net revenue of $9.8 billion and adjusted EBITDA of $4.7 billion. Now, the offers compelling value creation with significant expected synergies and adjusted earnings per share accretion in the first year post-close. So let's go ahead and look at some some uh, the fundamentals of this company right now. So the company is currently trading at $135.48 a share with a market capitalization of roughly $37.6 billion. Now, the company is projected to have about $8.13 billion in revenue for 2022 with earnings of a 400, uh, about $408 million. Now, the revenues are projected to grow, uh, increase over the next three years to around $9.54 billion by the end of 2023, with earnings of $2.04 billion by the end of 2023. Earnings are forecast to grow about 89.7% uh, per year, so this is definitely a high growth earnings potential. Now, looking at some of the analysis, uh, let's look at the valuation first. Now, because Global Payments is, is in the IT services industry and has positive earnings, the price to earnings growth peg and the price to earnings ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. The price to book ratio is excluded because it, unlikely, it likely underestimates the company's book value by overlooking hidden assets such as intellectual property. Now, the price to sales ratio is not as meaningful as the PE or the PEG ratio due to the company company's positive earnings. Therefore, global payment seems highly valued right now with the highest peg value in the IT services industry of 45.38 times, which is supported by a P ratio of, get this, 720 times. That is also the highest in the industry. Now, global payments has did, did have a large one-off loss of $1.3 billion, which impacted its June 30th, 2022 financial results. When I look at the fair price of global payments, when looking at its future cash flows, because uh, that's what we got to look at, you can use a discounted cash flow model. And by that standard, it is significantly undervalued. 
let's move on to the profitability analysis. So based on its operating gross and net margins, Global Payments converts its an above median percentage of its revenues to profits compared to other companies in the IT services industry. Furthermore, the company is profitable with an operating margin of 6.42%. Now, uh, looking at the dividend, now the Global Payments dividend is not sustainable. Over the past 12 months, the company paid more in dividends than it earned. Oh, uh, uh, over time, it cannot continue like this, and I don't think it will. Uh, looking at the growth of global payments, um, it saw earnings decline in spite of positive revenue growth during the past 12 months. Additionally, the average company, the IT services industry, was able to improve its earnings result over the same period. Now, uh, the earnings have grown, though, by 14.4% per year over the past five years. So it's still good. Uh, global payments had negative earnings growth over the past year, though, so it can't be compared to its five-year average. So I'm going over the five-year average. Now, looking at the financial strength of global payments, its debt-to-capital ratio is at 34.51%, which is in line with the IT services industry's norm, despite its increase over the last year. The company should be able to comfortably repay debt given its interest coverage ratio of 5.49 times. So what do the analysts say specifically regarding, regarding this company? So the average consensus, it's a strong buy. The average price target of global payments over the next 12 months uh, should be around $166 a share with a high estimate of 240 and a low estimate of 132. Now going over some of these uh, analyst reports real quick, um, the street ratings has a hold recommendation um, on uh, on global payments. The primary factors that impacted their rating were mixed, some indicating strength, uh, some showing weaknesses with little evidence to justify the expectation of either a positive or negative performance for the stock relative to most other stocks. The company's strengths can be seen in multiple of areas such as revenue growth, good cash flow uh, from operations and expanding profit margins. However, as a counter to these strengths, uh, they also find weaknesses, including generally disappointing performance in the stock itself, deteriorating net income, and disappointing return on equity. Now, the Ford Equity Research Report right here has a hold recommendation on global payments as a result of their systematic analysis on the three basic characteristics they look at. They look at the earning strength, relative valuation, and recent stock price movement. Now, the company has enjoyed a very positive trend in earnings per share over the past five quarters. However, while recent estimates for the company have been lowered by analysts, Global Payments has posted better than expected results. Now, based on operating earnings yield, the company is undervalued when compared to all the other companies that, that they cover. Share price changes over the uh, past year indicates that Global Payments will perform poorly over the next term. And finally, I'm just going to go over the CFRA report real quick. They have a buy rating on global payments. Uh, the shares remain attractive given it's predictable. They have a buy rating. So the, the, the share remain, uh, shares remain attractive given it's predictable growth profile, margin execution, and refined focus around capital returns to shareholders. They, like uh, Global Payments, recently announced acquisition of Evo Payments that I discussed, uh, given that one, it helps complement prior deals like the mineral tree deal that, that they closed by bolstering accounts receivable functionality in the B2B payments and helps solidify its longer term a cycle guide with 125 million in outlined expense synergies and incremental revenue opportunities. Well dispensed, uh, dispersed exposure in merchant ser uh, solutions combined with recent new client momentum and issuer solutions should help global payments perform well in the multiple economic environments and add to our bullish stance on the shares. Let me bring it back here. So based on all of that information, am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on global payments? Here are my thoughts. Global payments, along with other payment companies, provide platforms for in-store and online purchases, charging a proportion of the value of each transaction. Now, such a model uh, gives companies a recession-proof image and a promising growth outlook. Digital wallet spending is expected to rise 83% by 2025, exceeding $10 trillion, according to consultancy J Juniper Research. Basically, I see this company is undervalued 
and it has a moderate to moderate to excellent growth potential over the next couple of years. So based on all of that, I am a buy recommendation on global payments and I put a 12 month price target of 170 to $175 a share at the low end. So risk to this rating that I just gave you include deterioration and personal consumption expenditures above the expectations right now. And I'm pricing in all those uh, expectations of that recession. And unfavorable changes across the payment issuer industry. Uh, attrition to referral partners and independent software vendors could also adversely hurt the stock. But I'm not too worried about those possible cons to this buy recommendation. I see nothing but good things for global payments going on to the future. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks. Ciao.